up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2024 hyundai sonata courtesy of jack g and Volvo hyundai in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so we are in this one today because there is a new look for 2024 it's been refreshed so big changes on the interior actually as well all-wheel drive is now available finally for the sonata i love that you do get america's best warranty being five years 60,000 mile bumper to bumper 10 years 100,000 miles on the powertrain and you also get three years or 36,000 miles of complimentary maintenance as well so that's going to save you some money there so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are a few different trim levels for the 2024 sonata first one being the sel starting at twenty seven thousand five hundred dollars sel with convenience or convenience package going for thirty thousand five hundred and fifty dollars and lastly the end line going for thirty four thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars and so that was all pricing for the front wheel drive configuration you can add all wheel drive to the sel trims only if you wanted to do that add fifteen hundred dollars to either of those prices but as you can imagine with those three different trim levels there there are a couple different power plants for the sonata as well first power plant belonging to the sel trim levels that one is powered by a 2.5 liter direct injected four cylinder putting out 191 horsepower at 6100 rpm 181 pound feet of torque coming in at 4000 rpm that power being sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters which you guys know we will be testing out here in a little bit but zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 7.8 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 20 25 in the city 36 on the highway for the front wheel drive 25 city 34 then on the highway for the all-wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel but so then there is that n-line engine configuration and so for that one it's definitely more powerful 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder 290 horsepower at 5800 rpm 311 pound feet of torque coming in at 1600 rpm power being sent to front wheels only through an eight speed dual clutch with paddle shifters yet again zero to 60 time coming in at approximately approximately five seconds flat for that one with mpg numbers coming in at 23 in the city 33 on the highway but still taking regular unleaded fuel saving you money again but before we do any kind of fun paddle shifter or acceleration test here in the sonata wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes and so that drive mode button is located kind of just in front of uh i guess where your arm sits i'm just gonna put it that way but anyways drive modes will include sport my drive and normal adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response and the steering sensitivity and so now that i've got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find it straight away let's put the paddle shifters uh and acceleration here to the test we want to see how quickly the paddle shifters are going to react for us and let's see how quickly we can get this one here here, up to speed hey, heck let's do it right here rolling start go baby that's not bad that is not bad dude okay obviously the end line is going to be a heck of a lot quicker but in sport driving mode right there for our sel trim level that actually did a really good job at accelerating. You're 100 not going to have any issues in merging onto the highway. And really, uh, I had a 2020 Sonata, and that had the turbocharged, the 1.6 liter turbocharged engine that they had back in the day that they no longer have for the Sonata, and it felt just like that. Like there's absolutely no issues in merging onto the highway in this thing. That was plenty. So. I don't mind that but anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important and so obviously the braking configuration is going to differ dependent upon the trim level that you go with so for the sel trims you're going to get 12 inch ventilated front discs for the end line you're going to get 13.6 inch ventilated front discs then in the back 11.2 inch solid rear disc for the sel 12.8 inch solid rear disc for the end line as far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes it's going to come in at 121 feet for the sel and 110 feet for that end line trim level so both of those numbers are plenty respectable especially that end line that's definitely a sports sedan number 121 feet that is right on par for the course that's typically what you find in sedans and as far as braking feel goes in my short little test drive here today i have had no issues whatsoever it does instantly bring you to a stop so that is definitely on point but so then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars as far as ride quality goes it's probably the the first thing 
I noticed when I got in this one. I don't remember it riding this smooth before. And I also just got out of the Hyundai venue and I can tell you it rides a thousand times better than that. You can feel a good bit of the road in that thing, but this thing is just luxury light compared to the venue. But I will say again, I don't remember riding this smooth in uh, kind of before the refresh. I don't know if they did anything there or not, but this is an incredibly smooth ride in our SEL trim level. So no issues there. As far as steering feel goes, it does greatly differ dependent upon the drive mode that you put it in. So when you have it in that sport driving mode, it is a much heavier weight to the steering, instantly pointing you in the direction that you want to go. Um, having said that, if you wanted the heavier steering feel without the instant acceleration, that's what the my drive mode is for. So you can definitely configure it that way. That's actually what I did in my Sonata when I had it, because I did love that heavier steering feel, but I didn't necessarily want the acceleration all the time because, you know, you get better MPGs without that sport driving mode, obviously. So um, yeah, I, that's what I would personally put it in. I do love the steering feel in this thing. As far as cabin noise goes, it's it's luxury like if I'm being honest. So you do get an acoustic laminated front windshield, but you do also get acoustic laminated front door glass, which is something that, you know, even luxury manufacturers don't always give you. So it is a very luxurious kind of serene cabin that we have here in the Sonata now. By the way, that does come standard for all trim levels, even the SEL. So that is pretty darn cool. But anyways, that touching on rear visibility, I can see 100% perfectly fine out the back because of the shape of the Sonata. You're definitely not gonna have any issues there. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's not go find a cool spot in the snow and let's check out the exterior of our brand new 2024 Hyundai Sonata. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Hyundai Sonata refreshed. I think it looks good. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where this one is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the letter K, indicating that the Hyundai Sonata is built and assembled in Korea, KDM. And by the way, the exterior color that we have on this one is called Ultimate Red, in case anybody was curious. But as always, let's go ahead and start up front. Again, completely refreshed front fascia for 2024. More aggressive front fascia with the end line, of course, because we have the SEL, it's gonna be a little less aggressive, but my opinion is still <laughs> staying good in my opinion, so. I don't know, but LED headlights with LED daytime running lights do come standard, and of course they're completely different. If you guys remember, on the previous generation, it used to have like the headlights right here, and it used to be like a fade out LED daytime running light right there, which I thought was a pretty cool look, but now the headlights are down below here, just like basically the SUVs that they have. So, a little bit different of a look. The LED daytime running lights, of course, are running across the top there, just underneath the Hyundai logo found in the form of a light bar more or less. So that's what that looks like now. You do get the automatic feature, of course. You also get automatic high beams. And to the corners there, there are a little bit of front air curtains helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination. I do like the silver accents found on the front there too. And all the little icicles found at the very bottom because it is a wind chill of four degrees. So yeah, it's pretty cold. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the front of this one. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of this one, Chrome window surrounds do come standard chrome accents on the door handles are gone for 2024 they used to be in the previous generation but a new added feature here is you do get a little bit of uh, accenting found on the front fenders there you guys can see that so don't remember that being there in the previous generation but that's kind of cool end line badging on the front fender though if you were to go with that specific trim level taking a look in the mirrors they are body colored power adjustable sign mirrors they will be gloss black though with the end line and then heated gloss black side skirts of course in typical sonata fashion there then take a look down at the wheel setup 17 inch alloys for the sel 18 inch alloys for the sel with convenience and of course specific n-line wheels for the n-line but that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, and so now since we are around to the back of this one, lots of changes for 2024. Gloss black shark fin antenna all the way to the top, but then there is kind of this gloss black rear spoiler going from side to side. That didn't used to be that way. They used to be body colored, so don't want to let you guys know that. LED taillights though, they do come standard, so you got to love that. Again, in the form of a light bar to kind of tie in together with the front. But the interesting thing about this is all this design kind of in the background here including the Hyundai logo it's all kind of behind kind of like a sheet of plastic if you guys can see that so I kind of like that because I have a feeling if you were to hand wash this one that would be a lot easier to hand wash because there's nothing really to get in the crevices for the Hyundai logo or anything maybe I'm looking too much into it but 
Anyways, you do get the Sonata lettering spelled out horizontally back there. I think that looks good as well. Just underneath of it all, you do get a little bit of a gloss black rear diffuser, but when it comes to the exhaust, there is a single exhaust outlet tucked away for the SEL. I wish they exposed that. It used to be exposed with satin chrome tips on the last generation. Now everyone's doing away with the exposed exhaust outlets, which do not look as good in my personal opinion. But anyways, N-Line then is gonna give you dual exhaust outlets, but nonetheless, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. And so now since we are around to the back of the Sonata, when it comes to opening the trunk, there's a button on the key fob. There is a button by the driver's side left knee, but there is also a button on the trunk itself. It's a black button. Wish they would have left it inside the Hyundai logo. Um, I guess they can't now because it's hidden behind plastic, but I love that way. That was a pretty cool way. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 16 cubic feet even, so a ton of space back there. Of course, if that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split. There are some levers back there to go ahead and fold down those rear seats. There's also cargo lighting back there, obviously. And then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you will find a spare tire, which you gotta love on the SEL. But for the end line, it's gonna be a tire inflator kit. So a little bit different there. You guys know I love the spare tire though, but then make our way up to the rear legroom. That comes in at 34.8 inches. For reference, I am an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard. USB charging ports for both the SEL and the N line, but rear ventilation is only going to come on the N line, unfortunately. I wish they had the rear ventilation for the SEL. That was a big one for me, but Anyways, then make our way up to the front seats. Cloth seating coming with the SEL. Eight-way power driver seat does come standard across the board. Heated front seats also coming standard across the board. I'm gonna go ahead and turn those on now. Microfiber inserts with the M logo for that M line trim level. As far as seat comfort goes, uh, that was one thing that I never really liked with the Sonata. These seats aren't really that comfortable if you compare it to a lot of the competition. So that is one thing I wish they did change um, with a lot of the other stuff they changed for 2024. It's just the seat comfort is just not there for whatever reason but i don't know but then take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is going to be leather wrapped for the seo with convenience and the end line otherwise it's going to be wrapped in urethane but i do like the design to it and in case you were curious there's no longer the hyundai logo found on the steering wheel it's just going to be four little dots which by the way is morse code for the letter h in case you were curious about that. But so then making our way to the startup, let me start by showing you guys the key here. It is a very cheap, light feeling to the key, unfortunately. I kind of like the old key better, but I do got to give them props for the design. You got this cool H Hyundai logo within the key itself, but Hyundai digital key coming with the SEL convenience trim level and up. I love that feature, but it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee. And so, but then once started up, analog gauges will come on the SEL trim level. However, there is a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster available with the SEL convenience with the end line. And that is what you guys are looking at right now. And it looks stinking cool. But anyways, speedometer is on your left, tachometer is on your right. Right, and essentially everything else is going to be located in the middle of the screen there uh, things like uh, trip a trip b how many miles you have left until you hit empty um, there's a bunch of stuff you could check out safety information uh, there's tire pressure information for each individual tire uh, the list goes on outside temperature and so on so anyways then make our way to overall interior quality a panoramic sunroof coming on the sel convenience trim level and up led interior lighting again for the sel convenience auto dimming rear view mirror sel convenience trim level leveling up wireless phone charger SEL convenience trim leveling up dual zone climate control though does come standard for all trim levels aluminum foot pedals for the end line ambient lighting for the end line as well but so all the way to the front you will find a little bit of rubberized storage so I do like that it's rubberized to put your cell phone there there is a USB charging port also a 12 volt power outlet up there as well if you simply press on that that's pretty cool just behind all that you have a cell phone holder you got a couple cup holders uh, within the center armrest there's actually a decent amount of storage there I do kind of like this uh, texturized silver pattern that you have just above the passenger side glove box as well as just below the infotainment screen here. And in case anybody was curious where the shifter went, it is actually kind of a stock coming out of the steering wheel here. You just turn it up for drive, you turn it down for reverse, and you press it in for park. 
Um, so that's how that's going to work. That's different than the previous generation as well. So anyways, uh, interior quality is perfectly fine. I don't have any issues with it. So let's go ahead and move on now to the infotainment screen. 12.3 inch color touchscreen display will come standard for all trim levels across the board. And this is completely new, by the way, for 2024 without a doubt. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay as well. SEL convenience trim level in the end line is going to give you a factory navigation system. Um, you can check out a voice memo system up there so you can record your voice and then play it back at a later date. That's pretty stinking cool. And then there's all kinds of different settings you can play around with up there as well, of course. But you can, of course, also check out your radio information. And so when it comes to the sound systems, there are two of them. Six speakers is going to come on the SEL trim, but then the end line is going to give you a 12 speaker Bose sound system. So having said that, we do have the six speakers with us here today. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got planned today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. I know what it looks like. I know how it feels. It's hard to see. Dang man, that bass was intense. Did not expect that. That is probably, quite possibly, my favorite sound system when it comes to six speakers, at least. That is an incredible six speaker sound system. Like I said, clarity was really, really good. Bass was rumbling things a little bit. Not too much, of course, but I'm just saying there was a ton of bass there. So that's a really good sound system for it only being six speakers. So no issues there whatsoever. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen, at least, is when you do put the Sonata in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. It's pretty high definition as well. I don't mind that. But that, as always, is going to lead us into safety and so first let me start by saying iihs top safety pick so that's a heck of a start there front side side curtain airbags do come standard you get a driver's knee airbag as well in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard forward collision avoidance assist with pedestrian and cyclist detection adaptive cruise control with stop and go blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert safe exit warning lane keep assist lane follow assist and a driver attention monitoring system then as well so overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the new 2024 scenario I do like the redesign. I think it looks dang good, especially up front. So that is pretty cool. The tech is great as well. I wish I had rear ventilation for the rear passengers. I remember my SEL Plus trim level, the 2020 had it. So I'm not sure why they don't offer that on the non endline trim levels anymore. But I think the big win though for the 2024 Sonata is the all wheel drive availability because I critiqued that before for the Sonata because the Altima comes with it because the Camry comes with it. So I really wanted the Sonata to have it and now it does it's available so i wish we had it today because there's a lot of snow out but anyways let me know what you guys think of the new sonata in the comment section below that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching if you're free to follow me on social media and facebook and all that fun stuff if you wanted to see different spy shots of what i'm doing before these videos actually get to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that's what we do here in this channel after all I do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video Stay gold.